Eternal King here bringing you another LOR video today. So coming off of our previous Let Them Cook video, um, there have been some more interesting sort of changes in the Eddie meta that are worth discussing. And I kind of want to talk about why I think these decks are doing so well and specifically the things that you can do if you want to beat them if you run into them. So first up is going to be Ezreal Tempo. Temple. Um, I've only ever seen someone run this list once and it was basically an auto concede for them because the deck didn't really do anything. But the thing is when you're running into a deck that is nothing but tempo um, and that could be something like um, uh, again Eddie for example is just a tempo spam deck. Um, running decks that don't really do anything is actually a really good counter for tempo. So Seraphine for example um, being a great example of just like, you know, an infinite cycle creature that, you know, you just play it and then it can get dragged and it's a 1-4 and it's hard to kill and it can get dragged and it's essentially healing you for whatever the attack damage the opponent would do. Um, and then it generates a spell and then you can play it again and then you can play it again and then, then the third time you want to level it. And like that's how Majin would, uh, would play Seraphine competitively is just cycle out, cycle out, cycle out. And, uh, you know, a lot of this deck also seems to be focused on Turbo Seraphine. So a lot of Seraphine, traditionally the way that it's been played is exactly what I said, which is the Infinite Cycle Seraphine, the Slow Roll Seraphine. Um, this strikes me as a fast Seraphine deck. Um, whenever you have these sorts of nothing but one of constructions of just like okay cards, Fallen Felines an okay card, Group Shots an okay card, Otter Post is an okay card, Pytoss is an okay card, Piltoven Telstones is okay one of, Trick of Trade is an okay one of, Yordle Squire is an okay one of, right? Divine Draft, Glare, High Note, etc. Caretaker, Mystic Shot. Pokey, you know, again, is as a two of because I guess they couldn't figure out like another one of they wanted to put in. Um, etc, 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 right? Rummage. Uh, Quicken being very similar to the other bounce card I talked about in Ionia. It's literally like the exact same, but instead of three health, it's three power. It, But it's still very good. Um, Quicken's a very good card. Um... In a control list specifically, and then um, Howling Gale, Stress Defense, some fumes, just like a lot of just like one-off solutions to different problems. And then obviously you have your Sucken Temple, your Jana, um, you know your formula, your back alley art, uh, barkeep, and then your sputtering song spinner. Um, so like, it, th honestly, this deck doesn't really do anything. Uh, like I'm not gonna lie to you that there are a lot of ways of successfully dealing with a um, Seraphine shell. Uh, one of them is landmark removal. So you'll see in, in most of these cases that there are sunken temple decks. And sunken temple decks are basically um, synonymous with infinite cycle lists. Um, you can play your entire hand of uh, low value cards and then just cycle in more cards that are going to also be low value. But over the course of essentially infinite value, you accumulate um, some sort of win condition uh, with enough time that passes. And, you know, uh, you'll notice that a lot of uh, competitive players will sort of use the Sunken Temple crutch in a lot of their constructions because it means that you don't really need to build well so much as you have to um, uh, uh, just, you know, draw into enough uh, solutions over the course of time. Very competitive, uh, very common competitive crutch. So how do you beat Sunken Temple? Well, the really simple answer is, is you just remove Sunken Temple. Um, there's a lot of decent landmark removal in the game that simply does not get run. Um, you have Shirima on four. So on four you have um, in the Rock Bear Generator that will remove any sort of landmark um, that does not get played very often. But um, here it is. Desert Naturalist, right? Desert Naturalist will remove a landmark. In Shirima, um, sees low play. Um, in Shadow Isles you have Crumble. Sees low play, um, and then you also have the cards that cycle out landmark removal as well, all the explore cards. So, like, there's, you know, dedicated landmark removal, um, three mana on Noxus, you have dedicated landmark removal. Um, absolutely. So, you have things like the hard kill, um, uh, hard kill spell, uh, Scorched Earth. So, Scorched Earth will remove landmarks. So, like, there's a million things you can do to deal with um, an infinite cycle list like this, uh, the first thing you always want to do is snap remove temple. Um, so don't give them the, f the free five mana play on temple because the rest of the stuff doesn't matter, right? Uh, they play their Yordle Squires, they play their Fallen Feline, they play their Otterpus, their, 
they play their, um, again, honestly, none of these cards matter in the entire deck. Seraph they play their Seraphine, like, you know, if, if you kill the Seraphine, they just get another Seraphine and they get free cycle value. So, like, I wouldn't even kill the Seraphine unless it's, like, a free drag or something simple and easy. Um, in terms of win conditions, this deck doesn't have it. Uh, it has Ezreal, and Ezreal is the only thing you really need to answer in this shell. So when Ezreal comes down, you either kill Ezreal or you bounce Ezreal, and then you remove Temple, and then this deck just doesn't do anything. But the thing is, Eddie is just really bad at dealing with any sort of infinite cycle value shell. So obviously, I was talking about Rise being a very high win con, high synergy combo deck that also has infinite draw value, and that's going to absolutely destroy Eddie. Um, and that's, I was the first one to kind of popularize that concept. The more common approach is just to slam Sunken Temple because there's less thinking involved. It's like a one card solution to the problem. Um, but yeah, if you're Eddie, um, you know, you 100% should be running the uh, Demasi Explore card as a three of, and a lot of Eddie decks won't. Um, when you see Temple resurge like this, you just want to be on the hard three Explore package 100% of the time. There's no reason why you shouldn't be on Scholarly Pioneer. Um, if you're in a ramp shell, you should be on Scholarly Pioneer. Just like, just be on Scholarly Pioneer. It's the best Explore card. Just use this. Even in Shadow Isles, you run the Explore package, or um, Bandle City has a good two mana um, Explore cycler. You just, you just run the card. You run this as a three of. Um, that's what you do when you see Temple research. But again, um, when I say that like a shell like this is is fragile and easy to beat, and it's going to be overrepresented in stats um, as long as it's running into very two dimensional play scenarios, um, that's basically the full extent of it, right? Uh, you could kill this with a zero Aurelia fairly easily, um, but again, they have things like Caustic Rift. They have a lot of one off answers, so like I, I, I you know they have the Mystic Shot for the Aurelia. Um, I probably wouldn't go with Zero Aurelia necessarily into this. I wouldn't necessarily go aggro into this. Um, these types of decks, they love aggro. They love tempo decks. They're designed to feast on tempo. So um, I would probably just go, on, go at it from the other side and be a control deck that presents a clearer win con. And if you do that, this deck tends to fall apart. Because again, like I said, I've already faced it. It struck me as over underwhelming. I just bounced the Ezreal over and over again. And I had infinite healing in my deck. So the Ezreal was never going to burn me out. And that was kind of the end of that. The deck just didn't do anything. But um, the, the deck doesn't necessarily have to do something to be competitive. It can just be an anti-tempo shell. But again, it's good to see cooking, right? Like people are figuring out like, okay, if, if tempo spam is exactly what standard is, what do I present that is going to do well into tempo spam? And it's, it's really just like, uh, usually it's temple is people's solution. But, you know. Uh, again, if you don't want to build a comprehensive spell package and sort of figure out exactly what you need to run for every scenario and present a clear win con, temple, right? Like, that's that's the solution. Um, and then, yeah, so the other temple shell we're going to look at is, of course, classic temple with Nilla TF, but um, it is teched for infinite uh, cycle value, essentially. Like, that's what it's designed for. Um... And, and that's just the way of dealing with Temple Spam shells. So, like, Black Market Merchant, right? Two mana, two, two. Um, the, uh, the Eddie player is going to play the zero mana, you know, uh, or the two mana, zero, three. And then, yeah, you're fine with it. You just, you're cycling when you play the Merchant just to chump up the board. And, you know, you're going to play Master Lookout. This is, like, the most uh, Eddie uh, tech I've seen, where it's like, I'm going to play a one mana card that is a two, one, that would die to any ping in the world, and it's basically presenting zero value, unless you're specifically facing Eddie. Because Eddie doesn't have any pings, and doesn't have any answers. So, like, this thing is going to trade with whatever big thing the Eddie player plays, because it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger, right? Once you've drawn three plus uh, cards in a round, grant me one plus one and bash, right? So it's, it's going to be a 3-2 um, most of the time. But again, in any sort of comprehensive ping package, you would just like, okay, well, here's my Pytoss. Cool two one, like cool two one man, <laughs> like it's not that good. But um, again, if you're teching into a certain tempo spammy, um, you know, uh, matchup, this is going to do very well because again, people aren't running pings, they're not running answers, they're not running spells, they're not running anything. Um, uh, so you can just play this and expect it to, to trade into the the opponent's you know two mana card or whatever it is. 
Nilla, obviously, staple temple card. Don't have to talk about that. Um, heavy metal. Uh, this is, you know, uh, a decent mystic shot in Bilgewater. I've, I've always been pretty happy with heavy metal as a card. I never thought it was bad, so I think heavy metal makes sense here. Um, but again, you know, you have to be expecting a certain amount of equipment usage because that's really where the value comes in on heavy metal. Like, otherwise, I'm not sure why this isn't running mystic shot. Um, unless it is specifically thinking that there's going to be a lot of equipment in the meta, which may or may not be the case. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I'm not too sure what's happening here. And then, um, uh, Pilfered Goods. So again, this is the kind of thing where it's like, yes, I, I get it. Um, you know, you're basically, you run into Eddie, you, um, black market merchant them, you Pilfered Goods them, you, you know, warning shot to activate, um... Uh, and then you, you know, Yordle Grifter them, and you just keep basically stealing Eddie's big creatures to trade with them evenly. Um, and then also stuff like Slotbot, obviously Slotbot is going to get very big as well. And, and so again, Slotbot's a bad card, unless you basically expect nobody to have any answers to anything. Like if, if you're playing a, a game where everyone's running 37 creatures and 6 spells, and in fact only 3 of those spells are a strike spell or reactive in any way, um, you can just run slot bot and have it sit on the board and keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger because the opponent can't answer it on curve and they can't answer it period because there's no hard removal. Um, but otherwise, yeah, slot bot's a bad card. Like don't run slot bot unless you're specifically profiting off of, you know, um, Eddie. And, that, and that's what I see here, right? It's like, why is this temple deck doing better than competitive TF temple? And well, it's including the steel package is the big part of it. It's including big growth creatures, which is part of it, and, and then it's you know including more cycling and, and chumpers and stuff like that. But that's really what it comes down to, um, because again, uh, this deck could be shut down very easily, right? Temple comes down on five, you remove Temple. Nilla comes down, you kill the Nilla. Um, Chem Drake comes down on eight, which is like you're expecting to survive until turn eight to play Chem Drake. Um, that's very much an Eddie thing, and you play your eight six, and you expect it to not instantly die, right? Um, that's essentially just, um, again, it's, it's a burn win con similar to the Ezreal deck, right? Basically, we looked at Temple Ezreal, you know, Temple Seraphine Ezreal, which, again, you probably don't need the Jana on four. I, I would just run the three Ezreals. Um, you run Seraphine Ezreal, um, and that, could, that allows you to essentially infinitely cycle out and then burn out the opponent. And because they're Eddie, they can't do anything about that. Or you run, you know, um, Chem Drake, uh, Chem Tech Drake burn with temple and then sort of like your tf nilla stuff and then you burn out the opponent that way because they're eddy and they can't interact with anything you're doing because they just don't have spells you don't have spells like you can do the opponent can essentially style on you however they want and like that's how i profited with my rise deck with you know essentially auto winning with rise which is such an excep exceptionally low win rate deck i was winning with that so easily because, um, again, uh, if, if people just tempo, uh, a tempo spam, then anything you do that's anti-tempo is going to basically run laps around them. Um, and there's many, and again, the easiest way of doing that is Sunken Temple, um, typically speaking. And then, you know, uh, however else you want to build up the package doesn't really matter. You can run Ezreal Seraphine with Temple, and then just the Eddie player doesn't have the Temple answer because they don't run the three Explore cards, or they just don't draw it, and then they're basically boned. Um, so you just run Temple, and you just hope that they whiff on the Explore, and you're auto-winning that game 100% of the time. Um, or, again, you, you run uh, essentially the, the Nilla uh, T Twisted Fate version, and instead of Seraphine Ezreal with Temple, and then you just hope they don't have the temple removal, and then you just auto win. Like the rest of the deck doesn't matter that much um, in terms of its construction, right? So like that's the thing is like you can run something like counterfeit copies, which is not a good card. You can run something like pilfered goods and slot bot, which aren't good cards. Like you can run these like uh, Chemtech, Chemtech Drake, which is not a good card. You can basically do whatever you want in Elowar if your opponent is not running proper answers, and like that's really the thing. Um, so. Again, uh, I, I encourage cooking. Um, I'm telling players that like these decks are interesting and good and that they should be looked at, um, even if they are just like Temple Crutch style decks. Um, but it's worth mentioning that as soon as people start running proper mid-range spell constructions again, they start running proper decks, 
mid-range decks with answers, um, Temple tends to fall off the map pretty hard in terms of win rate because people just start hard taking Temple removal and then it's like, okay, well, your decks don't do anything anymore. Um, uh, Rise is a little tougher to have an all-in-one answer for. If you have a perfect Rise build, um, it's like you either snap or move Rise on four, or you lose the game. Um, and it's actually hard to snap or move Rise on four. So like when you have a comprehensive package, it's, it's very hard to deal with Rise. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, that, that's really the extent of it. Um, also, like, slight movement in terms of, like, Lee Sin. Um, so, Lee Sin Temple, um, currently also winning. Um, he's gone from 55%, so instead of Akshan Lee Sin, which is, like, the competitive construction, traditionally speaking, they've moved to Lee Sin Temple, um, which is also um, winning about 60% of games. So, like, basically just, like, Temple, right? That That is the solution right now to... The Eddie meta is just like if I was to say one thing, it's just like temple dot dot dot. Like whatever the temple deck you want to run is, um, that cycles out infinitely the hardest, um, run that deck. Um, so uh, whether it is Seraphine Ezreal, whether it is a card stealing cycle package, um, whether it is a combo based package with Lee Sin and OTK, just run temple. Um, that's basically where we're at right now in terms of the Eddie counter. Um, and I'm fine with that. And then if you get sick of Temple being in every single new competitive brew, um, the best answer I have for you is destroy Temple. And then you win. Um, so just play good decks. This is Eternal King, signing out.